Right, hello YouTubers, Facebookers and Instagrammers. So we're here today to do a little bit of hunting. Um, this is one of my client's dogs, um, a young Springer bitch. Um, she started off on online training with me for quite a while. Um, the dog was quite a handful at that point. We then started doing some training in person as well, which helped to bring it on a long way. Uh, we then made the decision because the dog was quite hard going um, for me to start doing a little bit of work with the dog. So we started to slowly get uh, the hunting and the turning under control. Um, so that's what I want to talk about today a little bit, along with a bit of stop whistle as well, which you're going to see me do here. Bang. So we're going to blow the stop whistle and do something what I call a rush which is when I blow the stop whistle, I move to do towards the dog very, very quickly, um, making my presence known to the dog. But believe it or not, I will always turn the dog just before I blow my stop whistle as the dog comes through super tight. That allows me to initiate getting a stop um, whilst the dog is uh, di directly facing me. So there's a moment as the dog turns to come back towards you, which I like to catch them on the stop whistle basically. You'll also see me here using my shoulders and my hands like uh, here an awful lot. So I really dictate the direction using my shoulders. So you'll see me turning my back completely on the dog, getting the dog to come through. Um, there we go, another stop whistle again there. You saw me rush the dog moving suddenly towards the dog to get that uh, sit. I then very calmly leave the dog to sit there for a moment. I approach, give her some praise, back off her again. And then we go into a recall. Asked her to come towards me, sit up. And then I've asked her to heal. So she's just gonna walk nicely to heal, encourage her around to keep up with me, sit her up. And then we're gonna use a hunt whistle to cast her off again, off she goes again. So you often need to get a turn in almost straight away. Now, one of the things I tell people is actually pip or double pip doesn't mean turn actually, it means come across my toes. It's just in most cases that the dog will have to turn to do that. But again, as I've just been saying, what I'm looking to do here is use my shoulders an awful lot of the time to control and manipulate the dog's direction. You'll often see me turning my shoulders completely away from the dog because it always wants to come across the shortest route to get to the new direction. Now you have to make the dog think that the new direction you're going is uh, actually going to happen. So if you just turn and stand still, often the dog will come through and then turn straight away again. Whereas what I'm going to do is push off in the new direction that gets the dog coming through. Now, believe it or not, this bitch used to absolutely fly all over the place. But as we put more and more discipline into her, she's now sort of uh, polishing our, our, our toes a lot more. I'd actually like her to get about a little bit more. And I'm sure that will happen as we get, go into next shooting season when the temperature changes. Um, also, you see me do another sit there, but this time I actually backed away from her as I blew the stop whistle to create a bit more of a gap. She didn't quite sit super sharp, but we'll work on that as we go. A little cast off again, straight back through. Um, so yeah, as we go into next shooting season and the uh, game scent starts to reappear, this time of year, spring now, um, the birds are often out in the crops in the fields and stuff, so the, 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 the scent isn't as what it would be in the winter months. And I want, I'm sure she's uh, done some rabbit pen training this summer, um, then she'll be much more uh, switched on to game and therefore start to increase the drive. It can be very uh, misleading at the beginning. You know, you can have a dog that's just pottering around in front of you and it can feel very, very easily under control, but it can change so quickly. So learning to pip and turn and get the dog in front of you, keeping it in front of you in a safe, zone sort of normally talking about 12 to 14 feet maximum from left to right trying to avoid the dog pulling on too far now one of the big novice mistakes i see an awful lot of time is people let the dog run on ahead and they just try recalling it back now to a certain extent that will work but it tends to just get worse and worse this method allows you to just control the dog all the time in front of you, hunting or quartering. Um, so that's the main thing that we're looking at here. Now, it's something that I work on probably with 80% of people. It's probably the biggest section of training overall, what I call control under freedom, being able to control the dog when it's free in front of you. There's various stages that we go through to get to that point. But if it's something that you're interested in the future and you want some help, then contact me on my Facebook page where I can help you out with some online training. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video.